And now for sports. Ghana Rose men have started arriving in camp ahead of their final AFCON qualifying fixtures in Porto Novo and Lagos. Watford defender William Trust Ekung, Fulham right back Ola Aino, West Bromwich Albion's Semi Ajayi, and Hamed Musa opened the Super Eagles camp in Lagos ahead of their African Cup of Nations qualifying games against Bene and Lesotho. The three time African champions are scheduled to play the Squirrels at the Charles de Gaulle Stadium on March 27th before hosting Lesotho at the Testin Balogun Stadium three days later. Trust Ekung arrived in Nigeria on Sunday night after helping Watford to a 3 0 victory over Birmingham City in Saturday's championship game, while Aino saw 72 minutes of action in Fulham's 2-1 defeat to Leeds United in a Premier League match on Friday. Ajayi, however, had a free weekend as West Bromwich Albion were not involved in any game. Shortly after the trio's arrival from England, Galatasaray, Duo, Henry Oyekuru and Ogede Karetebo landed in the southwestern part of Nigeria. Onyekuru and Etebo were in action as the Lions suffered a 3-2 loss to Lisesbor in Istanbul on Friday. Also in Lagos camp is Super Eagles captain Hamed Musa, who has been a free agent since he left Saudi Arabia, Al Nasser, in October. Meanwhile, Abia Warriors defender Adele Adekunle, who replaced Kenneth Omero, Eimba striker Anayo Iwala, who was called up for Sadiq Umar, and goalkeeper John Noble, have also joined Gennett Ross' squad. Chad were disqualified from the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifiers on Monday. Now, the move by the Cairo-based organization follows the unexplained dissolution of the Chadian National Football Federation by the Sports Ministry in the Central African country. Chad were already bottom of qualifying Group A, Namibia and Mali, who were scheduled to play Chad this week in the last two match days ahead of the tournament in Cameroon next January, were awarded three nil victories. Mali have already secured a place at the 24 nation finals, while Guinea are two points ahead of Namibia in the contest for the other place. Guinea hosts Mali in Conakry on Wednesday, and a victory will ensure a top two finish, while any other result will keep alive Namibia's hopes. The league management company and the Nigerian football fraternity are in mourning following the death of former Nigerian striker and Lobby Stars coach, Barnabas Imenga. Imenga, who was 45, passed away on the early hours of Monday at the National Hospital in Abuja. The news of the ex-international was confirmed by Lobby's media officer, Austin Tiowa. The corpse of the former Lobby golfer has been deposited at the Bishop Murray Hospital in Makudi. The league management company, in a tweet, mourned the ex-international Imenga, led Lobby to a second-place finish in the 2015 Federations Cup. The ex Super Eagles striker was appointed team manager of the Autumn Boys in 2013. As a player, was a member of the Nigerian team to the FIFA Confederations Cup in 1995 in Saudi Arabia. The Edo State government says athletes that will compete at the 2020 National Sports Festival must take COVID-19 vaccines before arrival for the country's showpiece sports event scheduled for Benin City from April 2nd to 14th. In a statement on Sunday signed by Edo State Deputy Governor Philip Schwaibu, who also doubles as the Chairman Local Organizing Committee of the festival, the state reeled out several guidelines for the event following an earlier meeting with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development. The statement added that the Games Village will open on April 2nd for athletes and officials with the Torch of Unity build to arrive at Edo State on April 3rd. The Torch will go around the 18 local government areas of the state before arriving at Samuel Obimudia Stadium, Benin City, where Governor Godwin Obaseki would latch up on April 6th. In line with COVID-19 protocols, athletes and officials expected to participate in the Games have been reduced from 14,000 to 8,000 participants, the statement added. Mac Lauren has signed 13-year-old American Carter Ugo Ugochiku to a long-term deal to support his development through motorsports junior categories. Gochiku has won a host of titles since he began karting in 2013 and last year won the FIA OKJ European Championship. As well as providing support for his career, McLaren have agreed an option on Ugo's services in the future. Ugochiku has already competed in both the United States and Europe and is currently in the OK senior class of karting. McLaurin famously signed Lewis Hamilton when he was 13 after an impressive start to his racing career. The Briton went on to enter F1 with a working team and won his first World F1 World title with them in 2008, aged 23. In February, Ugochiku was signed to the same management firm as current McLaren race driver Lando Norris. Amnesty International has written to FIFA President Gianni Infantino asking soccer's governing body to do more to protect migrant workers in Qatar, many of whom are engaged on World Cup infrastructure projects. 
the hosting of the tournament, which will be played in November and December of 2022, has already shown a spotlight on the often poor conditions construction workers are claimed to toil under in the Middle East. Hundreds of thousands of workers from South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa are employed on building sites across the region, and charities such as Amnesty say they are often exploited. Ahead of qualification matches for the Qatar 2022 Amnesty is called on FIFA to live up to its responsibilities to prevent human rights violations connected to the tournament and to use the full extent of its influence to urge Qatar to fulfill its program of labor reforms before the World Cup kicks off. Cochin added that Amnesty is concerned about recent improvements in workers' rights may be reversed. Qatari authorities say they have worked hard to improve the pay, terms and conditions of workers in the country, and not only those working on the World Cup. We, we sent a letter to, to, to uh, Infantino. Um, we've not had a response yet, and we've, we've engaged with FIFA um, very often over the, over the years. We know that they're committed to, um, uh, to try to, to, to ensure that the World Cup does leave a positive legacy. Um, we want them to do much more. Uh, we want them to make sure that they're much more hands-on in, the, um, in, the, in the delivery of the tournament to make sure the workers' rights on stadiums and, and other projects in the country are are respected. Uh, we want them to have a much stronger voice towards the Qatari government to make sure that they're speaking out, to make sure that Qatar fulfills its commitments towards its workers. And we want to, um, to make sure that human rights are embedded in future tournaments as well, to make sure we don't see the repeat of, of what we've seen and, and, and the, the, the different controversy, controversies and scandals over the last decade. So we look forward to a response. Uh, we look forward to a dialogue. And we hope that FIFA can do a lot more. Uh, and it, it, what, and that's all from the world of sports. My name is Wally Scott. Do have yourself a wonderful night rest.